Welcome to our Devos where we have been talking about the subject of infidelity. And it's such a big problem that we don't really deal with until it becomes all-consuming. So today I want to tell you something that you're like, this has nothing to do with infidelity. But again, I can't help but introduce it now because it is going to probably influence you if you're already struggling in some areas. When it comes to making sure that if you're married that you stay on the straight and narrow when it comes to being faithful to your spouse, or if you are right now not married and you're single and you're wanting to remain sexually pure, this is a very important concept to keep in mind, and that is check your company. Check your company. In uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33, the Apostle Paul says, don't be deceived, bad company ruins good morals. Now, this is something to me that I didn't start to appreciate until I became older. And it's the thing that our parents always told us when we were younger. And I think Jim Rohn said it about business leaders, but he really didn't probably realize as he said it that it applies to a lot of things. Jim Rohn was quoted to have said that you are the average of the five people that you spend the majority of your time with. Well, if that's the case, if you are spending the lion's share of your time around people that are A, divorced, be uh, married, unhappily married, and maybe pursuing an adulterous relationship, or C, somebody that people that are single that are pursuing sexually immoral relationships, guess what you're going to have a greater temptation to do? And you might say, oh, I'm my own person, and you know, I, I'm not like any of those people. Okay, well, if you're not like them, why are you hanging out with them? Why are you hanging out with them? Now, I'm not, it's not to say that if you're, hang, if you're single and you're hanging out with other single people and they're a little bit different than you, listen. My argument is simply this. The only affirmation we see in Scripture, when I say affirmation, meaning there's lots of things portrayed in Scripture when it comes to sex and sexual immorality that are described and not prescribed, but the only prescription we see that is affirmed in Scripture when it comes to sex is monogamous, heterosexual sex. That's it. We don't see any wiggle room for that. We don't see, oh, well, this is like a one-night stand. It didn't mean anything. Or we don't see, well, this is like a friends with benefits thing where we get together and I, you know, I don't have anyone. They don't have anyone. Like, it's not going to hurt anything. It's just being comfortable with one another. We don't see any of that. So when I am taking some of these stands, you're like, he's really being extremely rigid, that's because the scripture doesn't really give us any kind of wiggle room when it comes to these sexual views. Trust me, if there's an area right now where churches are caving, it's this area, right? So all that to say, if you are trying right now to say, okay, I want to have a healthy marriage, I want my marriage to thrive, I want to make sure that my spouse knows that they're my priority and I'm their priority, blah, 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 you know, you're trying to do all the right things. Hanging out with divorced people is not going to be the greatest of options for you. Does that mean that if your best friend gets divorced that you, you know, cut them out of your... No, that's not what I mean. But what happens a lot of times is you'll see a married person, and I've heard this conversation more than I want to remember. I hate that I have to say this, but this is what I'll get. I'll get a husband or a wife that'll come and talk to me about situations that are going on with their marriage and say, you know, my marriage is really going off downhill. And, you know, I'll try to talk to them about what it is. And inadvertently, it will come up, you know, well, my wife, you know, she's been hanging out with all these single divorced women. She's been hanging out with these women that have been divorced a year, a year and a half. They're dating, they're at nightclubs, they're on all these different websites trying to find, you know, hookups and different things. And or, um, you know, a, a guy, you know, uh, a wife will say, you know, he hangs out with all his buddies, but all his buddies are single and they get together and they go to the strip club and they, they watch porn, uh, they talk about porn, they do those types of things. Um, and I don't understand, like, this is when things started to go off the rails. That's because we are going to become like the people that we spend the majority of our time time with. I would rather that you have two or three really close friends that have higher morals when it comes to this kind of stuff than you do, than for you to have 30 really, really close friends that you pal around with all the time that are living lives that are unlike the life that you are trying to pursue in Christ. 
And this is something that nobody ever says. I mean, if you look at it from a a biblical standpoint, there's not a lot we can say, but a lot of times we put a lot of emphasis on, well, I got so many friends and everywhere I go, this person's my friend, I'm that person's friend. You don't have to be everybody's friend. Remember, Jesus hung out with 12 people for the most part. One of them was the devil, so that was kind of an audible, so we'll do 11, all right? So we have 11 people. But really, when it came down to it, who were Jesus's closest people that he was always around? Well, we have Peter, John, and James. They were like the three. They were the ones that Jesus always surrounded himself with. But at the most, you see in the most intimate settings, Jesus around 12. Now, that's a lot of people. Now, remember, he was God. And with the 12, one of them didn't have the right character, all right? I say all that to say, just because you have a lot of friends doesn't mean that it's good for you. So think about the company you keep. And if your marriage is off the rails, or if the dating situation you're in is leading you to sin repeatedly sexually and you're into immorality, what are the relationships around you like? What's happening there? And there's a really good indication that you just may be finding yourself the average of the people that you're spending the most of your time with. 